about, continue our talk about depreciation. Uh, what this time we're going to talk about though is what's called accelerated depreciation. And the, the method we're going to use is double declining balance. And the main purpose of this is we're going to be taking more depreciation expense that's going to hit our income statement earlier on and then less later on in the useful life of the asset. So we're going to use our same example. We have a vehicle or a machine, piece of machinery that costs $50,000. Our estimated salvage value is 10,000. Our useful life is four years. For depreciation for a straight line method, our depreciation rate was 25%. Under double declining balance, we're gonna double that rate. So instead of taking 25% per year, we're actually gonna take 50% per year. So we're gonna have more depreciation expense at the beginning of the useful life of the asset than we are at the end of the four years. Remember, our amount of depreciation is going to be the same. The other difference is, instead of starting off with the amount to be depreciated, under double declining balance, we're starting off at cost, and we're depreciating down to salvage value. So, over here, I have a little chart set up, and we're going to start off with our beginning net book value, which is going to be our original cost. So, our original cost is $50,000. Our rate is going to be 50%. So our first year depreciation expense is going to be $25,000. Our accumulated depreciation in the first year, of course, is going to be $25,000 because that's just the total depreciation we take. Remember, depreciation expense is an expense on the income statement. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset on the balance sheet. It will be lumped together with the original cost of the asset. We present those at net book value. Our ending net book value for the asset is $25,000. So that's what would be presented on our balance sheet at net book value, $25,000. Year two, we start with our ending net book value of $25,000. Our rate remains the same at 50%. So this year, our depreciation expense is $12,500. Our accumulated depreciation is 37,500 because we added our beginning accumulated depreciation of 25,000 plus our depreciation expense for year two. This is a total of 37,500. Our ending net book value is going to be 12,500, which is our beginning year, second year balance of 25,000 minus the depreciation expense we took that year. So our total net book value is $12,500. If you remember now, if we were doing straight line, each year the depreciation expense would have been $10,000. So our total that we had taken on straight line was $20,000. Under double declining balance is $37,500. So we have a difference there. So year three, we start off with our net book value of $12,500. Our rate is the same, but instead of doing our depreciation expense is $6,250. We're, remember, we're only depreciating down to our salvage value of $10,000. So once we reach that total depreciation, we have to stop. So for year three, our depreciation expense is going to be $2,500 is all. Our accumulated depreciation is $40,000. And our ending net book value is 10,000. So in this case, we fully depreciated our asset to what we expect to be able to sell it for at the end of its useful life. So instead of having 10,000 like on our depreciation expense in year three, like we do on straight line, we're only going to have $2,500 of depreciation expense. So what happens in year four? Well, actually, nothing. We start with a net book value of 10,000. Since we've already met our accumulated depreciation of 40,000, we're not taking any additional depreciation expense. So our depreciation expense for year four is going to be zero. So there'll be no, no depreciation expense for that asset on our income statement. Or any net book value which goes on the balance sheet will be $10,000. Okay, and that is how we do uh, double declining balance depreciation.